Here's some useful links. I'm sure you're going to see web links all tonight. Uh, we have surreyla.com we talked about. Ready.gov is FEMA's website on emergency preparedness. ReadyLA.org is Los Angeles's version of that. RedCross.org has got a tremendous amount of information on emergency preparedness. Uh, SoCal Prep has got list after list of things to put in your packs and things to prepare. SOS products, I'll put in a plug for our local uh, vendor in, uh, I guess it's Van Nuys, uh, near the Van Nuys Airport. They're the closest place that specializes in emergency supplies. If you're a CERT graduate, they give you a 10% discount on anything you get there. If you're not familiar with them, uh, they do have a parking lot sale in June every year, and they sell their supplies at a major discount. So putting all this stuff together can be expensive. That does help a little bit. Uh, and then lastly, the list, it is uh, winter, right? It is rainy season. Maybe we'll get some rain this year. This is the website you can go to to see which fire stations have the sandbags. It's got their addresses, their phone numbers. Almost every fire station has sandbags. Only a few have sand. 18 on Balboa in the Norway Country Club parking lot has. I know there's another one here, but I'm not sure. But call in advance because some of the fire stations keep their sandbags on property, means behind the lock, the lock gate if they're not there. So just call in advance before you head out. And lastly, our contact information, uh, Pat and I, if you have any questions, there is a sign up sheet in the back <coughs> on the main table. If you want to get on our CERT mailing list, we encourage you to do so. We'll send you an email. Let you know about classes, let you know about our meetings, and we look forward to seeing you all around town. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So as far as the list of some of the things that you should have in the home, that's also in the back. You have an entire list. Uh, also have one for your car. As far as the, uh, the speaker cards, index cards, once again, just to remind people, write your name up on top and who you want to ask the question to, and we'll try and get to them all. Uh, we're running a little bit late. We weren't expecting uh, Councilman Englander or an award from uh, Senator Hertzberg. Uh, pretty cool. Just to let you know, in future events, we're going to have our own CERT class right here in Granada. And it's going to be coming up in March or April at the latest. And not only is that free as well as other communities, but we're actually going to give away for free a free CERT kit to each and every graduate on us. That's pretty cool. So with that in mind, sure. our next speaker from LSUSD, from the Emergency Service of LAUSD, Jill Barnes. I'm so glad that you are having this evening tonight. I live in the city of LA. And um, I'm on my own neighborhood's very small emergency preparedness committee, and we're not quite where you guys are yet, so very impressive evening. So I am the executive emergency strategist for the district, which means I do all of the emergency management for the LAUSD. And that's, depending on how you count them, about a thousand schools covering 710 square miles in, I don't know, 20 something cities but not the entire county, and not every school, as Mike had mentioned earlier, because the independent charters um, have their own systems in place. Also with me tonight in the back is Lieutenant Mackey, who works in the Valley from the Los Angeles School Police Department. He does a fantastic job out here. So I don't think I'm going to tell an earthquake story. The first earthquake that I experienced was in Toronto, Canada, 
because I did not grow up out here. <laughs> but I've certainly experienced many of them that we've had since then. I've been living out in California about 25 years now. Um, most of my professional experience has been with the school district, but I am a former LAPD officer. I was in West Valley Division, and I'm a former Santa Monica Fire Department personnel. I was their PIO, PEO, their Public Information and Education Officer. So that kind of is a really nice um, background to have when doing the school emergency preparedness, because it really kind of brings everything together. It's really nice. I always kind of thought that the police and fire experiences would live in these separate corners of my brain, and now I can use all of it all day long, every day. Days like today are a busy day. I do also manage our emergency operations center for the district, which is where I was all day today, managing today's little emergency. I wanted to share with you two resources. I was not able to bring in the handouts that I wanted to because I did not get to my office at all. But we have an app for emergency preparedness for the school district. And if you go to, um, however you download apps, if you go to Crisis Manager, and it's, if you just search in your uh, app store for Crisis Manager, and you'll see School Dude Crisis Manager, we have a version of the app that is intended for parents and students um, that covers a variety of different types of emergencies and this entire app is available in English and in Spanish. And we have a separate version of the app that is available to any district employee, anybody with an LUSD email address, and all of our local first responders. And it covers all the details out of our safety plans on 18 different types of emergencies. I counted them before I came up. I'm looking for a Z, a Z emergency. They won't let me do a zombie plan. I literally, I desperately want our emergency plan to literally be from A to Z. And we've got A covered. And I think it goes to, goes to weather. So I need a Z. Perhaps zero, zero, zero day, I think, which is some sort of technological something. So still looking for Z. If you've got good Z ideas, let me know. Um, we do have very comprehensive emergency plans in the schools. We've just redone them and put them into a new online platform so that they can all be accessed by all of our school personnel and they can each view the plan, see what their role is in the plan, and then implement it. Um, we also do have a website with a really long name, parentemergencyinformation.lusd.net because that's what it is. And it goes over all the different types of, of emergencies and gives a lot of information. So if you're looking for something on the website, you can use that as well. In addition to our extensive emergency plans, we do have a lot of emergency supplies on each campus. In LUSD, the district supplies the schools. Um, in some other areas, they rely on parents to supply some of the emergency supplies of the schools, but a lot of our schools are located in pretty impacted areas where that just wouldn't be realistic. So the district has stepped in and we have a three-day supply of water, we have emergency food, we have rescue equipment, we have first aid uh, equipment, we have sanitation equipment, everything we need. We know that in a, in a long-term disaster, we're gonna be with the kids for a while. Something like an earthquake, that's why we have three days worth of supplies. We'll be there with the kids until they are all reunited with a custodial adult. So we're gonna be there with them. We do have training in place for school personnel. I'm a one-person office, so I can't necessarily get to all thousand of the schools to deliver all of the training that I would like to do. Um, I'm a CERT instructor as well, uh, and I love teaching CERT, and it's a fantastic class. And I will tell you that the day that you use an actual fire extinguisher on an actual fire, it's, it's your superhero day. You know, you go home that night, and it's like, what did you do today? I put out a fire. <laughs> it's a great day. We do have a lot of training that's in place for our school personnel. All of our buildings comply with the Field Act, which is a very special law in California that stipulates that California public school buildings are built to a higher construction standard and inspected more frequently than any other building in the state. And Lucy Jones, whose name I've heard several times tonight, 
stated once and said I could quote her, she said she would rather be in a California school during an earthquake than virtually any other building in the state. That says a lot. So what that does mean is that our schools are less likely to fail. They may become damaged, but they're less likely to um, completely be destroyed in an earthquake. And of course, it does depend on the size of the earthquake. And that's one reason why our schools are used frequently as shelters. The shelter process is not automatic. It's a very, in, there is a process to it. It's a coordinated effort between me and the city, the county, the Red Cross, and we decide where the shelters will be. And then of course you need to allow for some time to get the supplies there. And if the students are on campus and we're taking care of the students, then the first thing we look to see is, are there other places in the community we can use as a public shelter instead? So that we can continue to take care of the students on the campus that are already there. So when you're talking about school emergencies, it really comes down to just a few different basic actions. One is drop, cover, and hold on, which we use in earthquakes, and if there's uh, any sort of a, an explosion where we need to protect ourselves, evacuate buildings, which we do for fires and other things where the building itself may be hazardous. Then we have lockdowns, which is our most frequently used uh, emergency plan item. I almost said our most popular, but that's probably not quite the right way to be thinking about it. But we have lockdowns in the district somewhere every day. Literally, every day. Um, it is almost always police activity in the neighborhood. It's very, very rare that it's something that is generated by something on our campuses. And then we have shelter in place, which is bringing the kids inside with the windows closed um, and usually shutting off the air conditioning and heating because there's something in the environment. And then we have relocation, which is in the rare instances where we have to move kids from one campus to another. Generally, we can keep them safe and they're safest on their own campus, but we did do some relocations for the wildfires in December. And then any of those can, can be followed by a reunification, which is the process of making sure that the kids get back to the right parents. It isn't always necessary to do that, the best way to make sure as a parent that you're up to date on um, what's going on in the schools, you can ask them, they will share, show you a copy of their, of their school safety plan. Make sure that your phone numbers, your contact information is updated. Put as many people down as possible, just in case you're not available. And maybe your spouse isn't available, so the more people that are authorized to pick up your kids, the easier it's going to be. We do most of our notifications through Blackboard Connect, which is Often it's a, it's a voicemail message. Um, we've also got texting that we will do. And we don't do emails a lot for the parents just because we don't have a lot of email addresses. When you do show up at a school, if you look for the relocation signs, it will show you a sign for the request gate and the reunion gate. And you want to go to the request gate first. And do bring your ID um, so that you can get your child back. And the final thought that I want to leave with you is that in schools, we take care of kids every day. It's what we do. In a disaster, we're just taking care of slightly different needs. But we're still taking care of kids every day. Thank you.